everyone. I'm Liz Brown Swanson, and welcome to RPV City Talk. It's great to have here in studio the mayor of Rancho Palos Verdes, Mayor Jerry DeHovic. Thank you for being here. Always my pleasure. So tell us, how's it going as mayor so far, a few months in you know, for the new year? I, I think I told you, I, I love being mayor. I love serving on council. Um, you know, being mayor, you are you're, uh, uh, have the ability to do some additional things. People call you for more speaking engagements and all that. And, you you're know, more popular. Yeah, well, <laughs> they, they, they want to see, you know, having, the mayor has a little bit of status in RPV. Right, and, and how was life in RPV, would you say, right You now? know, life in RPV is great, as you know. Uh, my wife and I, every day, it's so funny, we spend most of our time together in the morning, and she just, you know, She's from New York, and she, she every day it's how gorgeous. The and, view you know, has been spectacular. Everything spectacular, green. green sunsets, the whole nine years. We're all very lucky to live in Rancho Palos Verdes. I think everybody yeah. would agree with that. Yeah, so think, things are great in our PV. Well, that's good. Yeah. Um, you just had your council meeting on Tuesday, and it was action packed because the first meeting in February was canceled. So you packed it all in, um, discussed everything from goals, Senate Bill Fifty. Um, but I thought we'd start off with exciting news to congratulate the newest uh, volunteers that are now on you guys appointed uh, planning commissioner. One planning commissioner. And 13 committee members for different five different committees. Five different. We have so. the planning commission. We have the FAC, the finance advisory committee, um, infrastructure management advisory committee, emergency preparedness committee, traffic safety committee. Um, I think those are those are the five that we dealt with. And you had, what, 24, 25 applicants. applicants. We actually held a special meeting to get through all of the uh, interviews. And, and, you know, the good news, Liz, and I think you know this, and I say this, and every council member says this, we are so lucky and so blessed with the citizenry that we have in Rancho Palos Verdes. They are just extremely smart and accomplished and educated and willing to step up and serve the city and serve the council in an advisory capacity, which most of our committees, um, well, actually, mo all of our committees do. Mm -hmm. um, but the tough part is making the choices because everybody is just so well qualified right. and eager to help. So you had to pick 14. And so, we did. And I think it was great. I think you mentioned, um, as an example, our mayor pro tem, John yeah. Cookshank, who several times trying to get on planning commission. Three times. You know, three's a charm. So Third time's a charm. And, so um, keep trying if you didn't make it, and please yeah. apply, because it really makes but a big important. difference. And these commission committee members, I know my husband's on the IMAC, and it's there's a lot of work to it, but, you know, you do it for your community, and it's great because you're involved. And you are involved, and you really do make a difference because, you know, they are representative of the community at large. You know, a lot of citizens get involved at our meetings and stuff, but the committee is representative of the, the public at large, so it's great. Okay. Um, well, the big deal at the February 19th council meeting was you, uh, the council took a look at what are the city's major goals. You've revised the first time since 2014, 2014, the goals and the action plan for the city. So we're going to go through it, right? Good, yeah. So why don't we to. just start with highlighting sort of the six categories, that how the goals are broken down, and then you can we'll sure. go from there. Well, a couple things, just just for a complete correct record here, that the goals were set after multiple meetings by the prior council. 2014 was the last time we formally adopted it, but okay. once a month we go through tentative agendas and our goals, and those are always updated. And if, if anyone takes the time to read okay. it, it shows the accomplishments over time. But we needed to do kind of a major rewrite mm -hmm. and revisit. Uh, I thought we did an excellent job, spent a lot of time the first time we went through it. And I do want to acknowledge Councilman Alegria and, and city founder and Councilman uh, Ken Dida. They spent a lot of time, and the staff. The staff worked really hard. To take what we had, and I and and I was pretty vocal about not tossing what we did before, and they grabbed that and ran with it. But but again, you need to know where you've been. We need to know historically what we've done, and you need to set a goal so you know where you want to go. And the five categories, and they're lofty goals. <laughs> they're, they're lofty, but the 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 macro categories are number one, obviously public safety. Mm -hmm. That's that's obviously number one. One A is infrastructure. Um, the other categories were modified. We have city lands and facilities. We're trying to become more efficient by, by definition here. So city lands uh, and facilities, quality of life goals, citizen involvement and public outreach, and government efficiency and transparency. So those are all the macro areas. And, and there is a goal assigned to each of those. And I can highlight some of that if you'd okay, like, yeah, if that works for you. For sure. So let's let's start with the first one. Public safety is always number one. Yeah, and the goal there is maintain a high level of public safety with public engagement. And there are, you know, multiple things in this category, but some of the things we'd like to reduce residential burglaries by 20%, which would be 90 annually, you know, and that may sound like a lot, but we are a very large city. We have 13 and a half square miles. Uh, in 2015, that was up in the, in the hundreds. So uh, we're, we're down, we're a very safe community, but the goal is to try and get that 
a 20% reduction, which would bring us under 90, which would be outstanding for our city. All right. Um, we've got, we've actually, which was, which is a bellwether here and something that a lot of cities don't have. We have a public safety strategic plan, an actual plan on what we're going to do across the board for public safety. And that, that comes with, you know, emergency preparedness, traffic safety. There's a whole host of things that go into that. Um, we want to coordinate with the various uh, groups on the Hill, CHOA, Council of uh, homeowners. HOAs, Homeowners Association, Neighborhood Watch. Um, another big thing, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop because I know we've got a lot to go through here, but the ALPR is on Western. We've got basically the whole hill covered with the automatic license plate readers, and that has been a monumental success. Uh, okay. Again... Go ahead. If you come into RPV with a stolen car, you're going you're to get gonna caught. You're not going to make it out. Yeah, you're there's not cameras make everywhere. It out. Cameras <laughs> everywhere. And, and again, it's only for law enforcement purposes, not for anything else. Exactly. And we got to finish that. We got to do it on Western, so we're ready to proceed with that. So, so within these loft, these goals, I mean, <coughs> to reduce crime by 20% or burglaries, that's great. And mm -hmm. um, but also, you're putting money there because you're expanding with resources too with the sheriff's department. Absolutely. Over, over time, I know since you've been there, I'm watching of. Two new, two more cars that patrol RPV. You guys are putting money there. Well, thank you for bringing that. We do <laughs> have the two cars. We have an additional SAT detective because, and and I really didn't realize this. Part of part of prevention is really solving crimes after the fact because that word does get out. Uh, we also have a dedicated patrol uh, for the south side of the hill, which was a which was a little bit of a stepchild at one point, and we got a lot more activity as far as guests and stuff. So we needed to make sure the south side was secured. So we spent a lot of money. Our actual uh, Budget for sheriff services has gone up quite a bit, but I think that's money very well spent. Uh, yeah. One thing about since we are saying sheriffs, is there any update about we are without a captain still? I we are. Lieutenant Mike White is acting. He is, so. and he's doing a fine job. And and again, uh, as far as timing goes, we we have very little input into that. Okay, we have so the new sheriff filling away over there. Stay tuned. There's been a change at the hierarchy downtown, okay. and. But it's still uh, business as usual at the sheriff's department. We there. we have excellent service. Obviously, we hated to see Dan Berenger go. Mm -hmm. He was great, and uh, but but we are we are still in great shape. Yeah, and so. and because the sheriff's is understaffed, they're working on that, filling those vacancies. It's it makes very a big interesting difference. you said that. <laughs> where I think our local station here, Lamita Station, is eight or nine sheriffs down right now, yeah. which isn't good. But we are still, you know, there's a lot of overtime going on. They're 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 stressed and taxed, but you know. We'll get through it. All right. So, so move on to goal number two. Goal number two, infrastructure. infrastructure. And the goal there is to assess, prioritize, and plan for the maintenance improvement of all public infrastructure, including transportation systems, parking, utilities, storm drains, and sewers. Some highlights there, and I think the, the public would be interested in this. Number one is arterial and fences master plan. You know, the city, again, I said is very large. We have 13, 14 miles of major thoroughfares. We'd like to get some continuity on the walls. And, you know, you go to a lot of cities, they all have you know, uh, posts or a certain color or a certain type of block. And we need to get some of that continuity because you have disparate fencing and it doesn't look all mm -hmm. that great. So we're going to come up with a plan. It's not going to be done all in one fell swoop, but as things get replaced, they're going to have to conform to the plan. So that's a big one there. Um, dealing with our, with our sewer and storm drains is huge in RPV. <clears throat> we have a 10-year program that the prior council insisted on that we actually looked at all our storm drains and we have a plan that we're going to attack a certain portion of that over the course of the next 10 years. Very important. You know, mm -hmm. we had those uh, sinkholes on Western right. many years ago and, and what a disruption that was. So we never want to see that happen again. Another big one on infrastructure is the landslide. We're going to get our hands dirty on that. We're moving forward with that. That's very important if we can save some of the 600000 to a $1 million right. we spend they repaving, that'd be great. Paving today. Paving today. And I saw the, the notice came out. You may see a little yes. delay there. Yep. Um, schedule, a master schedule for the, the maintenance of all assets. That's a good thing to do. You think that goes without saying, but it really doesn't. One of the other big things we have is the undergrounding of utilities. Now, what's interesting there, I know Councilman Crookshank has been a big advocate, as has Councilwoman Brooks and I, but just... Up until very recently, there was a major impediment to doing that, that Southern California Edison said, basically, we do it when we want to do it. And by the way, you have to pay for it. And the, the dollars with undergrounding utilities are astronomical. Mm -hmm. But apparently that's changed. There's going to be some cooperative effort. The biggest piece of that is we really want to talk about um, um, undergrounding in our open space because... You know, we are we are a fire rich environment. Unfortunately, there's beauty associated with that. But once things dry out and you get a fire, it could be catastrophic. All right. And 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 most of the major fires we had in the open space had to do with utilities 
faulty utilities, dropped wires, squirrels, you know, triggering a transformer and starting major fires, which could be catastrophic. So we're looking into that. That's important. Um, Traffic improvements along Western, you know, again, Western, some of the some of our East Siders think Western is a little bit of a stepchild over there. And what's what's odd there is half of the street is LA City, half is ours. So mm-hmm. we're trying to communicate together and working with the city of LA. You know, they're a behemoth and that that takes a lot of doing and a lot of years to get done. But we're gonna move forward on that. And finally, again, the acquisition of all the street lights and and changing to LEDs, saving a lot of money there and also allowing us to put the ALPRs on the east side. So. so that's going forward this year, then? Going forward this year. That's a so, done deal. So moving on, are we, are we moving on to the next goal? Sure. City, City lands, lands and facilities. facilities. All right. Okay. Assess, prioritize, and plan for the maintenance improvement of all city-owned properties. That encompasses a lot of different things, buildings, parks, uh, the proposed civic center, and that's probably number one on our list right now. And again, we've talked about this before. We have to get some of the, the deed restrictions squared away with the national park system to even think about doing anything. We may or may not get there with the Civic Center, but we at least have to get the steps in place. So that's there's several goals associated with that that we'll, we'll, we'll get to And you still have point. a Civic Center Advisory Committee meeting about this as well. We do, and we're very grateful to that group. That's another committee that's uh, not a standing committee. It's an ad hoc committee mm-hmm. for a special purpose. And that, that's a large group there, and they are very diligent and meet quite a bit and have a lot of good ideas. But I think uh, what you were also saying at the meeting in terms of the Civic Center, until you can get those deed restrictions list, lifted on this property here where we're sitting, to actually build something, there's you know making all these plans, right? It's, it's like moot. You can talk about, oh, let's horse. see how are you going to finance it, how you're going to do all this, and I kind of said you're putting a cart before the horse. So let's see if we can even do something. But so. we have a team out there. There's lobby. You have people working in Washington D.C. to get these. We do, and we actually the good clients. news is I think it's Chairman Bishop of the national at the federal level in Congress is supportive of our efforts. So I think we'll get there. Yeah. And and I know Councilwoman Brooks has worked hard. She's done some personal lobbying mm-hmm. locally and in DC and Doug Wilmore. We've paid a lobbyist. So hopefully that will 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 uh, bear some fruit. Now the government shutdown changed some of that yeah. timing and, and the, the change over in Congress too. So we'll see what happens. But I'm I'm optimistic as I normally am. Okay. So Ladera Linda, as you know, that's a big one right around the corner from us. You know, several items, several tasks, several uh, uh, things that need to be accomplished there, but we're moving forward. Actually, uh, hats off to Corey Linder and staff. They are meeting with council members, uh, individual HOAs, ind- individual HOAs individually and in group se- settings. Um, there's so been a lot of meetings. A lot of meetings, and there's a lot. Right. <laughs> a lot of people are you know have a lot to say about, it. and it's a very unique parcel there. Uh, unlike some of our stuff that's on major thoroughfares, Hess Park and Ryan Park and all that. This is a you know. Two lanes, one in, one out, neighborhood right next door, old school. You know, there's it's, it's a lot of, lot of uh, interesting dynamics that have to be addressed there. So very interested in what the public has to say, and not just the immediate public, but the public at large. So they're mm-hmm. doing a good job there. Uh, you know, we talked about the, the turf at Hess Park. We're trying to make that better. That's a big project, an expensive project. And unfortunately... Um, you know, we're going to have to go back and, and fix some of the stuff that You've wasn't done correctly. You've done a lot at Hess Park with Lower Hess. Hess Park looks really good. Yeah. There, there's some there's some talk. There's an additional 12 acres on what they call Lower Hess. You have Lower Hess Park in the lower portion of that. Uh, there's a desire for that to be addressed, and that's on here too. So we'll see where that goes. Um, Trails parking. Never. Well, we'll, we'll parking get to side, yeah. Yep. Parking. Parking. Just a, a comprehensive parking preserve parking program. That is huge because parking has been an issue. You got people on the south side, people up at Del Cerro, people all over the place. And, and you have finite ingress and egress uh, points for the preserve. So we're going to continue to work. on. I think we've done a good job. And we've done a good job at Del Cerro. We've yep. done a good job down at Forest Hall, too, because that neighborhood was getting inundated with cars. And mm-hmm. we've moved. We actually tore down a section of Ladera Linda for community parking and put proper signage. And we have uh, a... Uh, uh, traffic safety controller there when AYSO is up there and telling people we red stripe some curves and stuff. So I think we're doing a good job there. Biggest thing I want to say, a shout out to Councilwoman Brooks. She keeps talking about Lyft and Uber. If you really think about it, that is the best way to deal with it because you can be anywhere. You hit that thing, they're going to come get you. That's right. And it's cheap and you can get parked somewhere over, mm-hmm. you know, at the promenade or wherever or down the street and get that Uber to take you right. away from that instead of worrying about parking. Great idea. Yep. Great idea. I'll pitch that. Finally, the last one was the Trails Network plan. And as we talked about before, too, that's, you know, we have multiple plans out there. I think there's no less than five or six 
uh, different plans that have come forward over the last two or three decades. And we're really trying to consolidate that and get on the same page, mm -hmm. using the same naming conventions and nomenclature and all that. And really, so it's useful for the public and staff and the and signs the look beautiful. That signs are, in there. are gorgeous. They did a great job on they that. They did. They yeah. did. Hopefully, they don't that they don't fall into disrepair. But, no. you know. they did a nice awesome. Job. So those are those are some major ones on city lands and facilities. Uh, next, quality of life. Um, big issue in RPV. We've got an outstanding quality of life, as you know, and I think most every resident would agree. But some of the little things, ones that, one that comes up and, and we've done a great job on is short-term rentals. Uh, that program, with, with the assistance of our uh, uh, city attorney and staff, um, extremely successful. Mm -hmm. we, we, have, we have got it almost down to nothing now uh, as far as it being a public nuisance. Um, you know, people have fallen in line on that. We've gotten multiple more compliments than you can think of. The people are very pleased with that program. So we'll continue to pursue that. Uh, barking dogs, something that's, some individuals think that's an issue and not an issue, but really what the issue is there, uh, we contract with the county now and they have a protocol to address it. The question is really, is that sufficient or should we bring that in-house at the city and let staff locally deal with that? Because it really is a local issue, but the county's working hard to try and maintain that service, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, coyote management plan. That's coyote, a, the county's been helping with that too here. They have, and that's big. And, and we have an issue over here on the west side in the Black Horse area that, that uh, it, it, it's become problematic in our Moranian uh, by the way, condolences. Ara lost his father recently, so I'm we, sorry we're to thinking hear that. of him. Yeah, very nice man, um, age of ninety. But anyway, condolences to him and his family. But he is spearheading this effort with respect to the coyotes, and uh, we are going to address it. it. You know, most of the time, it's it's learn to live with them and how to deal with them. Yes. But this one, there's going to have to be some action over there because uh, with with the uh, Rolling Hills Country Club and that whole Chandler closing down there. Those coyotes have kind of moved up the hill right in that getting area. getting more aggressive and more habituated. And they're looking at you and saying, don't look at me, I'm going to come get you. It's, they are. Yeah. It's, it's, it's an issue, so we have to deal with that. And, and another quality of life issue is the wireless uh, telecommunication um, uh, antennas primarily. The FCC came up with a ruling that basically took away almost all local control. Mm -hmm. What you can charge companies to come in and, and, and uh, put stuff up, where they can put it up, how long the city can take to approve it, what what is applicable as far as any standards that we can impose upon them. So there's a there's an effort, I think it's the city of San Jose that is trying to rally um, um, our legislators to try and, try and take a look, because that was a real cram down. They just basically said, we don't care what you say, we're gonna allow for-profit companies to use public access, public space, uh, to put their towers where they want to make a profit. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have to deal with that. And then uh, moving on to more under quality of life issues, we have Western Avenue redevelopment strategy? Or that yeah, that was that was actually, that was the last one on the... Um, I think uh, I haven't got the updated list either. From yeah, that was a quality of life. Western Avenue, we want to look at that redevelopment. That's That's been started and stopped over the years. We had a... <laughs> a a Western Avenue revitalization program probably five or six years ago that, that wound up turn up being a debacle, but you know, we won't go into that. But it does need to be revitalized. And again, I think I mentioned that we have to uh, work with the city of LA and coordinate and make it aesthetically pleasing, uh, business friendly, resident friendly. You know, we have to deal with the traffic issues there. The traffic on Western is horrific now. Mm -hmm. You just forget about driving during school times. It's right. just, you know what I'm talking about. I it's do. just, it's crazy. But anyway, we'll get there. Uh, next one is citizen involvement and public and outreach. Public outreach, you know, we want to one of my favorite categories. It's a good one. We want to engage all the residents, community partners, to help the city and our commissions and uh, uh, committees and the staff, basically in our decision making process. So some of that stuff is. We actually have a leadership academy, if residents don't know that. I attended the last one. Did you? I did. I went with my husband, Don, even though he's already on IMAC. I was more curious to see what was being presented. And so I thought, you were an observer, not a participant? I, I participated and observed. Ooh, no, I was a participant. Good. I thought I found it incredibly um, educational to have a better, even though I work in the city, to really understand how you communicate with staff and staff communicates with council. You know, get, get how what you all department do the, actually does what? Yeah. What is public works but versus it, community development? But you, did you do the? You were the I first did. participant in we the leadership. We were the inaugural, yeah. absolutely. Look what happens—you become mayor. 
Uh, that's 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 maybe part of the punishment. But that, <laughs> that's that's a great gift to the community that the staff goes out and does this because it really is, and and it's been every participant has been very thankful and and happy to have gone through the exercise. And there are many graduates of the Ad Academy serving in our city yeah. commissions some committees. Of, some of them just council. appointed now. Absolutely. And the other thing is just one other one of note here is you know, we want to bring back. Uh, a coordination of all the different HOA presidents, and and we used to have an annual breakfast, and I think we're going to resurrect that. And uh, that's important because our it homeowners is. associations. I don't know the number that we have, but almost every neighborhood has one, right? Almost everyone. There are a handful that don't, but you know, and and Cho is around too. But we just we we want to uh, reestablish this thing from a city perspective. Cho is its own organization, not city run, and mm -hmm. and this is something that the city can do. So but we definitely have a very engaged citizenry. Here. And we welcome it. I, 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 we get most of our great ideas by residents sending emails and calling and saying, hey, what about this or that? And yep. that's what actually takes a lot of time in, in vetting what we do as a council is digesting all this input, which is great because, you know, we're not the smartest people around, but we, we need the input and the help at all times. So we've that, that government the, efficiency and transparency. We want to talk about fiscal sustainability. You know, our city's in, I say it all the time too, in outstanding financial shape. Our finance staff is the best we bar none the reporting that we have the transparency that we have the amount of data that's available to any resident who's interested in looking at right. it we have open gov everything's on the on the website we have our compensation and benefits analysis when everybody gets paid all of it to the nickel so not not hidden like the state says oh do it this way we put it all out there so. rpvca.gov. Just go on the city website. It's fantastic. You also see what's the latest things going on. I mean, it's just everything that's going on in the city, you'll find right there. Absolutely. Including this document that we're looking at right now. You can go on the agenda and find the goals and the action plan. And, and you can hold you this can to account. You can read along with us. <laughs> read along, hold this to account. You can see yeah. when things are supposed to be done, when they're not getting done. Real quickly, because I know we got a lot of things to talk yeah. about. Um, we're on, we're on, we're, we're last, on the, we're on the last, last page, last goal here. We're talking about... You were uh, saying about, about and, transparency and accountability and in and, and terms of like TOTs on there, trying to make sure we know what's going on with that very important piece of our finance, which is money coming huge. from Karenaya. Huge, and that's one of the things that we actually need to look and, and, and plan for a rainy day. You know, Karenaya and the TOT tax, you know, that's $5 million around mm -hmm. plus or minus a year. And you know times are good and have been good, but you always got to plan with what if Watch that those trends, what if too. it comes down to two million a year? So you got to we got to plan ahead for that. We've been lucky on that. A couple other ones. The um, big thing that staff has brought forward, and I know this is one of Doug Wilmore's biggest things, is uh, enhancing the internal and external customer service. Internal meaning dealing internally with the city staff and and some of our vendors, but external are residents and that that process of you know there's a commitment to try and get 100 percent satisfaction. Uh, with you know, 24-hour turnaround. These are lofty goals. It's almost unheard of in, in municipal government, but that's that's really what they want to do. And we're going to implement technology to help us get there. Um, efficiency in the development process. We had an example. There was some confusion on one resident that that didn't know whether they should be dealing with public works or community development. When he was trying to, he was actually building a house from scratch on a lot that had never been development, and it came. It became clear that we need to help residents in that particular area. We're almost a build out, but in that particular, the coordination between public works and community development, we're, we're going to fine tune that and make it easy for our residents to, 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 to navigate. navigate it. Exactly. Charter City, again, we're, we're looking at that. We're, uh, the council is talking about that. We're going to probably have a few more meetings on that and see where it goes. There's some talk about if we're going to move forward that the uh, ballot in 19 may be the time to do it. So. You'll see some movement on that coming up. Uh, NCCP, um, the the uh, wildlife agencies have that. I think there was over 100 comments on, on that document. So in my mind, there are some corrective edits that need to be made. That'll be coming back to the public again, more meetings. But, you know, we've been only doing it for 20 years, so a few more months is not going to hurt anything. This council tackled a lot. <laughs> we're trying, and we, we're trying to accomplish General that. plan update and NCCP, doing it all. Trying. And the last one is we have Zone 2, uh, the landslide moratorium, which is uh, a big one, too. That was, you know, dealing not to get into the weeds here, no pun intended, but, you know, the monks, the monks issue, the Portuguese bend area mm -hmm. uh, there's there are some residents back there that have basically argued that they should have the right have the right to build and and we're going to go through that and there's an eir environmental impact report sequa there's a 
whole host of stuff. So we could do a whole show on Zoom too. We and could, we and we may that. have to at some point. But anyway, that that that's it at a very high level. We there are some edits to be made to this document, but in very short order, it'll be on the website. It's uh, be in our be exciting year, 2019. We have a few minutes left. Oh. Senate Bill 50. That was another big item that you guys tackled at the council meeting. Huge. Um, just in a, can you give a brief explanation about sort of the council's position? It's housing bill that's right now in the Senate, so it's not approved yet. That's and, uh, right. Designed to encourage housing development, high traffic corridors. What does all that mean? <laughs> well, anyway, Senate Bill 50 is, is a rewrite of uh, Senator Weiner's Bill 827, which was defeated before. And it basically says if you have uh, a, a high traffic area or a high job area, um, that there should you should within a quarter mile have the ability to basically preclude cities from imposing restrictions and basically build 55 foot tall buildings in what potentially may be a single family residential area and it, it supersedes again local control it's a big issue this is a second stab at it over here they call them you know transit rich housing and and job rich areas but the bottom line is if you're close to a transit hub and they're, they're really talking about ferries and trains, and they throw buses in there. We obviously don't have ferries or trains in RPV. Right. We do have two bus routes, and that's along Western Avenue and Hawthorne Boulevard, which may be deemed transit-rich. Uh, if that were the case, within a quarter mile of each of those stops, you can put these high-density homes, and it overrides the city's ability oh. to stop that. So uh, not conducive or... or uh, um, you know, in line with what we have here in RPV. To residents that live in these cool, maybe higher transit areas in this city need to get involved and start calling. They do, and the city's going to get very aggressive. We've, we've been aggressive with it in the past. We're going to be dealing with Senator Allen on it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we predominantly have single-family residents here, so it's totally inappropriate for these types of structures to be built. So the good news is, and I'm going to end on a good note on this topic, is there is a serious effort, um, and, and the legislators are listening to removing the bus corridors from that. Because it's really appropriate. It's, it's again, fraught with potential manipulation. Right. You can put a bus route here, and then a then year it later away. it's gone. And all of a sudden you got a 55-foot, you know, massive structure there. So anyway. All right, well, as we have to wrap it up here, we've got to end with the most exciting things that happens in the city coming up, and that's one of the most exciting things, Whale of a Day. Absolutely. On April 13th. You're going to be there. I will be there, along with my family. It's just, it's a spectacular event celebrating the whale migration at Point Vicente Interpretive Center. What do you love most about that? You know, Liz, I think one of the things I enjoy most is it's something my family uh, and I have enjoyed every year since we moved back to RPV. And as we get together since they were little kids up until now, they're teenagers and they still love to go to the Interpretive Center and Whale of a Day. So I look forward to that. And I also look forward to the uh, camaraderie with all the citizenry in RPV. It's a nice small town feel. Same thing like with our July 4th mm -hmm. celebration. We're a big city, but, you know, the community comes together. You can chat with neighbors and see friends you don't see all that often. So it's, it's a great event. And also a lot happening at PVIC. Right now they're putting in two new exhibits. There'll be a ribbon cutting for those exhibits at Whale of a Day. That's One right. is going to be the uh, showcasing the Point Vicente Lighthouse for now Lund's Light. Absolutely. And that's pretty cool. And then there's a whaling one. So I don't know if you're excited the city supported to put those in. The city did. And we're, we're very grateful to the uh, California Cultural Historic Endowment that paid, paid help us pay for these exhibits through grants. Uh, the Fresnel lens is something to behold. It was right down here at uh, Point Vicente for almost 100 years now. Mm -hmm. I think it was installed in 1926. Uh, you know, you can see that thing 20 miles away. It was the largest illuminated uh, uh, feature in all of L.A. County for a long time. So we're excited to have that yeah. at PVIC. And we also have the uh, Shore Whalers exhibit going in, too. And whaling was a huge industry back in the mid-1800s, the Portuguese you know, realize the, the economic benefits of, of whale blubber. They used it for oil, cosmetics, et cetera. So there's going to be a very nice exhibit there. I'm very excited to see what they put together. Whale of a day, it used to be in the beginning of March. It's been moved, so the migration is tending. The whales are now going back up north. But we see them. And, we do uh, see them. And, it's probably know, a better time of year, don't you think, to have is. this festival? It is. We had to change it I mean, due to weather, and we're, we're lucky. There's been a couple of years we've been rained out, but that first couple of weeks in April are, are the perfect time to do that. All right. Well, we covered a lot of ground here. And, we did. Uh, don't forget to get out there and join us at Whale of a Day. And thank you, Mayor Jerry Dehovic, for being here in studio. Thank you, That's going to do it for this edition of RPV City Talk. I'm Liz Brown Swanson. See you next time, and I hope to see you on April 13th at Whale of a Day. Take care, everybody.